Hi there, welcome back to the video series of deploying production ML models with TensorFlow Serving. My name is Wei, and I'm a developer advocate at Google. In our last episode, we learned about customizing TF Serving. In this episode, we're going to discuss how to improve TF Serving performance. TensorFlow Serving is the inference framework that helps you serve your production ML models with low latency and high throughput. While TF Serving is designed with high performance in mind, its performance is highly dependent on the application it runs and the environment in which it is deployed. What this means is that tuning TF Serving's performance is somewhat case dependent, and there are very few universal rules that are guaranteed to yield optimal performance in all settings. With that said, we are going to share some general principles and best practices to tune TF Serving performance in this video. First, I should let you know that we have published a comprehensive performance guide on tensorflow.org. Most of the tricks we will discuss today are already covered in this guide. I highly recommend reading through it after watching this video. If you have trained any machine learning model before, I'm sure you are already familiar with TensorBoard. TensorFlow Serving seamlessly works with TensorBoard as well. You can easily start a TensorBoard instance and capture profiling information. After you send some requests to TF Serving, you can analyze the trace to find out where your bottlenecks are. You can potentially redesign your model to get rid of those bottlenecks. Please visit this TensorBoard guide to learn more about it. TF Serving is an online serving system for machine learning models. As with many other online serving systems, its primary performance objective is to maximize throughput while keeping tail latency below certain bounds. TensorFlow Serving uses the TensorFlow runtime to do the actual inference on your requests. This means that the average latency of serving a request with TensorFlow Serving is usually at least that of doing inference directly with TensorFlow. While the average latency of performance inference with TensorFlow Serving is usually not lower than using TensorFlow directly, where TF Serving shines is keeping the tail latency down for many clients querying many different models, all while efficiently utilizing the underlying hardware to maximize throughput. There are various things you can tune to optimize TF Serving performance. Let's start with optimized binary. Modern GPUs often have extended instruction sets to improve support for CMD or other dense computations. But in order to run on slightly older machines, TF Serving is built with the modest assumption that the newest of these features are not supported by the host GPU. Sometimes you will see this warning that your GPU supports certain instruction sets, but TensorFlow binary does not. In this case, you should rebuild the model server binary, which will give a performance boost. Please visit this link to learn how to build TensorFlow Serving from source. Accelerators like GPU make machine learning models run much faster and provide much higher throughput. If you have a tight latency or throughput target, you should consider using GPU for inference as well, especially for heavy models. TensorFlow Serving supports two API surfaces, REST and gRPC both of which are highly tuned and add only minimal latency. However, in practice, the gRPC surface is observed to be more performant. Here's a rough benchmark I did for ResNet recently. As you can see, the average latency of 50 requests for gRPC is clearly lower than REST. So if you want better performance, it's recommended to go with gRPC. Another thing you should do is batching. There are two kinds of batching. You may configure your clients to send batched requests to TensorFlow Serving, or you may send individual requests and configure TensorFlow Serving to wait up to a predetermined period of time and perform inferences of all requests that arrive in that period in one batch. Client-side batching is pretty straightforward, so we won't talk about them here. Server-side batching is particularly useful when you use GPU, to enable server-side batching, you need to set enable batching and batching parameter file flags when starting the model server. Here is an example of the batching parameter file. 
Make sure to check out our batching guide to learn the best practice of setting various batching parameters. Once you enable batching, you will see this message in the log. This means TF Serving has turned batching on and you should see better performance now. The next one is model warmup. TensorFlow runtime has components that are lazily initialized, which can cause high latency for the first request. This latency can be quite significant. To reduce the impact of lazy initialization, it's possible to trigger the initialization of the components at model load time by providing a sample set of inference requests along with the saved model. This process is known as warming up the model. The example code shows how to create a warm-up model. We also have a complete example for ResNet. Please check it out to learn more. Once you put a TF Serving warm-up request warm-up file in the asset extra folder in your saved model folder, you will see this message when you start TF Serving model server. This will reduce the latency of the first request. In addition to the batching parameters we already talked about, there are a number of other parameters that you can tune, most notably TensorFlow intra-op parallelism and TensorFlow inter-op parallelism, which control thread pool for running the TensorFlow graph in a parallel fashion. You should definitely experiment with these parameters for better performance. The next tip is to enable XLA. XLA is a domain-specific compiler for linear algebra that can accelerate TensorFlow models with potentially no source code changes. To put it in another way, XLA optimizes the TensorFlow graph to make it run faster. We won't go into details about XLA here, but one thing about XLA is that there are two ways to leverage XLA, JIT, just-in-time, and AOT, ahead of time. Right now, TF Serving has experimental support for XLA JIT, which optimizes the graph on the fly instead of ahead of time. You can enable it by setting XLA CPU compilation enabled to true. We'll discuss a bit more about XLA in our next episode when we discuss serving JAX models. One last tip before we wrap up today. Often in real-world production systems, we have a number of TF serving servers behind a load balancer, so you should make sure to tune the parameters in a similar environment instead of on a single instance of TF serving. This approach will help you make sure the tuned setup is applicable to your production system. If you want to learn about setting TF serving behind a load balancer or a proxy, please check out our collab for image classification with TF serving. In that collab, we set up an unavoid proxy with a round robin load balancer. To summarize, today we discussed quite a few ways to improve TF serving performance. Note that there's no silver bullet to tune the performance, and your mileage will definitely vary. So you should experiment with different settings to get the most out of TF serving. With that, let's wrap up in this episode. In the next episode, we will discuss some advanced features in TF Serving, such as serving JAX models. See you next time.